That's right, friends. We're here. We're going to rate some monsters. I'm the man you may know, Z, and I am joined by my man, Gigablast02. He's going to bring the heat from the monsters. We're talking I'm monsters. Shy, and we've got uh, we've got a tier list because we've got some monsters we wanted to talk about. We wanted to rank them, you know. And yeah. uh, you know, there's nothing better than ranking monsters in the morning, or the evening, or the afternoon. So you've got some monster or experts, <laughs> or even real late <laughs> at night. Whatever you want to do, <laughs> we are here for you. We're going to bring it, and uh, we're not going to tip our hands on which monsters they are. You're just going to have to be surprised along with us as we rank these monsters. We have a fantastic tier list for you. And uh, the first monster we're going to bring into focus is a 2006 film from Bong Jong ho I looked it up. It's the host. The host with the most. It's the host monster. And uh, he kind of looks like uh, this thing. And part of what we're doing here today is we're going to rate these monsters on their destructive capabilities, their coolness as they walk down the street and get recognized, or just are cool in general. Maybe they smoke cigarettes. I don't know. And then maybe we're going to rate them on how easily you can beat them. So... With our first friend here, he is a toothy monster who jumped into the river and came out much bigger. It's the host. And you say, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you said you had the pronunciation. I'm going to say good luck with that, sir. Okay. From from what I remember, I think it's called the Guamobu. <laughs> okay. I, Guamobu. I agree with you. <laughs> Whatever it is. Uh, so it starts with a G. <laughs> yeah, it starts with a G. It's not the big G. He's kind of a little G. So this is a this movie is a, I've seen this movie, and uh, how familiar are you with this monster? I am not entirely familiar with the kaiju. However, if you look back at the essence of um, of what the the creature itself was able to achieve. You kind of look back and you remind yourself of how Shin Gojira actually played out, where it started out as this creature in the water, and then when it came on land, it was slowly evolving, and people are like, we got to stop this thing because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how bigger this thing's going to get. And, I mean, I mean, even just looking at an image of it kind of reminds me of how the... Um, how, how the internet pronounces is that the Kanata-kun now looks like. That's a good. That's a really good point because uh, this thing definitely it, it evolves. It it seems to get it gets different. It gets it doesn't as, it does get bigger, but it's not does, like yeah, it doesn't get as big as like the, the mass of what Shingo Jira did. But it, it it changes. It evolves itself as as it goes out through um, the movie. Yeah, it's it's a pretty. I've seen the movie a couple of times, and I really do enjoy this one. It's from one of my favorite directors and one of my favorite movies of all time parasite and this thing it's it's interesting because it kind of carries the same themes as parasite where it's this creature that kind of comes out of nowhere and i guess it's like kind of a pollution monster so in some ways mm -hmm. it's connected to godzilla because that sounds a lot like hedora so it's right. it's kind of like this pollution monster and what's really interesting about the movie is it takes a very personal like it abducts one I mean, it eats a lot of people, but it abducts, like, one child, and they're trying to recover the child. Like, this family comes together to try to find a way to get the child back because I guess it's, like, I don't know if it's going to eat her later. It's unclear exactly what his motivations are. But His motivations fun. are for the script. Yes, they are for <laughs> the script. So it's a little bit it's a little bit deeper than your, your average kaiju movie. So... I'm going to give it, it's destructive. It ate a lot of people, but it's not like, you know, a Godzilla type can just stomp one stomp and kill like hundreds of people. This thing can't, right. it's not doing a lot of damage. It's it's a killer, but it's not exactly like, I wouldn't say it's exactly a destroyer in a sense. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, I, I could be wrong about this, but it doesn't like tear anything down for the most part. Um, Just... 
if anything, it, it, it kind of exactly how like you said it just kind of kills a lot more people than it does actually destroy things. Yeah, it likes to eat people. So I mean, people are tasty at times. You know, uh, what do they say? Uh, Soylent Green is people. So it, it already discovered the secret. I th <laughs> and, and then I think as far as cool, it's pretty cool. It's hard to look at because it's weird and it kind of like seems to keep changing it reminds me of like a resident evil kind of creature like in resident evil 5 you have to fight this guy and he he injected this uh, uh mutagen within his body and when i looked at that thing i went that looks exactly like the thing from resident evil 5 yeah, it kind of um, does it kind of does this is really weird and then i'm gonna say the way you kill it i think they tried to kill it conventionally and it like swan dives into the lake so it knows how to hide in the water and that's difficult to do and, and no one's invented an oxygen destroyer as far as i i can i can see so i think i feel like it's gonna sit in the a tier is that a good tier or should it be a b tier i don't think a lot hmm. of people know about it but i think it's still a Agreed. cool monster but it i think it's cool it can't I think do a lot of damage. Us, right. I think it's setting the standard for what we're doing. Um, I think it I think we'll have to see how the rest of the tier list goes. But from what from what is presented right now, I'm willing to give it around a B tier, A tier kind of deal. All right, let's sit it in the B B tier for now, and then we'll come back to them later. We'll see if, if we feel comfortable with this. The next one we have, speaking of people or monsters that love bridges, because it makes its home in a bridge. And then our next friend here, he he likes to he also parks himself on the on a bridge, specifically the San Francisco Bridge, and more specifically, it came from beneath the sea from 1955, the giant Jeez. octopus. Now, I, this one holds a special place in my heart, and there's a very specific reason for that. It's because. This is a Ray Harryhausen film. Well, it's not his film, but he did all of the effects for it. And okay. anything that Ray Harryhausen did, who's the master of stop motion, they, in fact, said that this movie wouldn't exist if he didn't do it. And, <laughs> I mean, he's like the god of practical effects. There is no man, fr from my understanding of, of Ray Harryhausen, he used to just be like, tell me what you want me to make. And then he would sit in his basement for like like hundreds and hundreds of hours filming. He would take a picture of each stop motion tiny little thing that he would move on these damn things. And then just keep filming it. And it was like the dude would kind of work on his own. I think he had an assistant at some points. But the man was a machine who would just do all this on his own. Now, the thing I think that's funny about it is its destructive capabilities kind of limits itself to one bridge because it doesn't like right. the San Francisco Bridge very much. So that's kind of the the entire scope of the movie is that it attaches itself to a bridge and then it kind of just menaces from there and doesn't do much else. I mean, it can't move that far from the water, I'm going to assume. Um, no... Yeah, I, I I know the stop motion uh uh guy uh for for a while now. Um, actually, my father he's the one who even really taught me anything about stop motion. And he, when I was being homeschooled, that was my assignment was to study up on that guy. Oh, really? Um, That's awesome. And and honestly, stop motion is a credit, my friend. Like to have the patience, the wit, and just a small dent could throw everything off. There's this one guy on YouTube that I'm going to shout out. His name is EG underscore Elm, and he does incredible stop motions. Um, very, very well done. And I wouldn't, I really, <laughs> I, I don't think I would have the patience necessarily to do it, but that's why I do more so of the directing than I do yeah. the actual uh, taking the time and actually like putting pieces together. But um, for the creature itself, um, it's a giant octopus. I mean, to to be just quite frank, it is the Kraken, in a sense. Actually, yeah, it's essentially the Kraken. It's on a bridge, and I mean, we don't really get a nice scope of how much he did he does within the entire film, other than he's able to camp there for how how even long was he even on there? To be honest, I I know at some point he goes back under the water, um, but I'm. I mean, I hate to rate anything that Ray Harryhausen did lower than, like, a B tier. 
I oh, tempted no, no, no. Yeah, to put no, it on the C tier. Yeah. It, it can do a lot more damage than than the host did. And he's, I mean, he's an octopus, so he's not like the coolest thing on earth. But, he but does. you have to give it. You have to give it credit for the for the fact. I mean, it's like an octopus in stop motion. I mean, oh. just those two words together tells you how much attention to detail that this man had to give it. Um, so cool factor. I would personally shoot it at least to a nine out of ten because it's an octopus. So that's the only negative credit I'm going to give. I mean, it's not anything special, but it's the attention to detail that was in the model in order to make the stop motion project happen is what I'm going to give its credit to. And it's, uh, it makes it pretty cool. How about we go A tier on this guy? Because he could do a lot of damage, too. Like, if he wanted to, he I'm sure he could mess up more than a bridge. Right? He could mess up. Like, hmm. he could crawl into the city a little bit and pull down some skyscrapers and then exit back into the bay. Hey, I think the big the lesson that we should all learn here is, is don't park your city by the bay or else a giant octopus could <laughs> enter it. Right? Yeah, the the biggest message you had, Kong, which was just about an emotional connection between uh, monster and human. We had Godzilla, which was don't fuck around with nuclear or radioactivity. And then <laughs> Giant Octopus, octopus says, don't park near the don't, ocean. Don't park near the ocean. Plus, I'm pretty don't sure park th near the ocean. there's a giant octopus <laughs> that attacks Kong in uh, uh, Godzilla versus Kong. And he does some work on Kong, too, even though I think yes. that was a live octopus. So... And this is stop was, motion, and it looks yeah, just right, it as was. real. So, I think they electrocuted. And then of course, we had the thing. octopus from uh, Kong Skull Island, which was able to give Kong a bit of, um, bit of a trouble. A little so bit. So I of definitely trouble. think that the octopus itself, like the one from the giant bridge, I think it would definitely be quite indestructible. I would say. I'd say because I think octopuses in real life are hard to pull apart. Yeah. Um, themselves. So imagine like that as a bigger rubber octopus. Yeah, I would I would say A tier is is fitting for it. Yeah, I th I hate to put anything that Ray Harry House had touched any lower than that because I feel like that's disrespectful to like a man who's such a legend. So let's, uh, let's yeah, and I think coolest fact I think the coolness factor also needs to play in the fact that if it wasn't for those monsters in the past, we wouldn't have the monsters we have today. Very true, very true. So let's let's go to the next monster. This one's gonna be controversial because. It's from Ghostbusters 1984. We're talking about the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. And I'm going to make a case to put him in a, in a controversial tier. If you don't remember, uh, Ray, was it Ray Stance? Ray was asked to think, they were asked to think of your destructor. Uh, Gozer says to them, you know, whatever appears in your mind will be your destructor. And the rest of the Ghostbusters are like, clear your minds, don't think of anything. And then <laughs> and then Bill Murray says to Ray, you thought of something, didn't you? What did you think <laughs> of, Ray? And he's like, I couldn't help but think of my time roasting marshmallows. I thought of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I mean, that instantly makes him an S-tier coolness factor. Is you're going to get destroyed by a happy little, well, a happy giant marshmallow man. I mean, his destructive capabilities, I don't know. I Maybe this is not as controversial as I think because he's a big, giant marshmallow man. Like, what are you going to do against that? He's almost impervious to damage unless you have a giant nuclear reactor on your back. Like, what do you do? So so my thoughts, especially on the Steak Puff Marshmallow Man, is though the movie didn't portray him as an exact threat for the most part, I believe it was either in a comic book or it was a book in general, but one source material proves that the Steak Puff Marshmallow Man is actually indestructible. I mean, <laughs> if, even when they uh, even when they gave him these uh the the heat ray blast and he was taking it all. He just got like a little scuff on his face, yeah, but it wasn't until true. they crossed the streams on a di on a dimensional portal of divine power that exploded, and that was the only thing that really killed him. And of course, I mean, why wouldn't it have killed him? That power source, exactly as the guy said, would split atoms into into molecules or things like that. Um, so the fact that that was the only thing that we got to see really destroying the state puff marshmallow man didn't actually show his capability but the thing itself only took the form of the state puff marshmallow man 
it wasn't actually a state puff marshmallow man yes that is it would be point. like if um it'd be like if um a go a, a apparition took a figure and just took the closest thing that it saw and became that that's yeah. all the state puff marshmallow man was the thing underneath the 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 facade is the actual powerhouse itself and i think that alone is what makes it an s tier yeah, I think you're right because I was I was thinking it was a lower tier, but now that I really think about it, especially considering like they tried to damage him with the proton packs and that did not work at all. Proton packs, that's what I was looking for. I'm going to say that they they literally they couldn't do, they couldn't do anything against him. They had to break a dimensional gateway. I, I think that put them up. the streams. Yeah, <laughs> like uh didn't you say that would, you know, molecularize all of our atoms and destroy all of it? Exactly. Hey, that's what we got to do. Sometimes that's what you got to do. So I agree. S tier. I mean, I couldn't think of anything more horrifying being in New York City than watching a giant marshmallow <laughs> man stomp on my car, my taxi. I'd be like, yeah, uh, yeah. can I get I, New York is bad, but I, that makes it the worst. You so, come from Japan to get away from Tokyo. And then all of a sudden you go into New York and then there's a big marshmallow man. You're like. What the heck? What did I get away from me, people? <laughs> yes, I, that would not make me a happy camper. Okay, so no, not me either. All right, so we we're we're in agreement here. Let's move to our next guy. This one could also be controversial because I think I have a point to make about him, and maybe this isn't the best picture ever. But I think you get the idea. It's the Cloverfield monster. The mm. Matt Reeves directed J.J. Abrams' problem of Clovey, the Cloverfield monster. I am of mixed thoughts of this one, and I don't know how you feel. Uh, when did this come out? 2015? Is that no? That's way. Too I think late. it was 2013 20, or 12. Two, it was 2008. Like, 2008. Yeah. No. No. It, because I, re I remember it came out when I was little. It's um, like yeah. It, it's like the first found footage monster movie ever made right i'm gonna say right i do remember it making me kind of nauseous when i saw it, where i was like i don't feel so good watching this because the shaky cams are too shaky right that's how i felt like about the blair witch it's like it's not that i hate those kind of films it's just with the amount of running that cloverfield especially had oh, and yes. it just it made it hard to pay attention to because with blair witch it actually gave moments where it, like it focused on the characters and whenever there was a running scene it was like it was cut up or it was blackened to where it's like it it, it wasn't hard to it wasn't hard on the viewers eyes yeah i i agree with you because this movie i don't normally get motion sickness but this definitely gave it to me and blair witch definitely did not <laughs> So, I mean, D Cloverfield's destructive capabilities are pretty, uh, clearly pretty big, but right. I'm almost going to call Cloverfield a fraud. And here's how I feel about it, because they attempted to make a Cloverfield universe, and you may not know this about me, but I am one of J.J. Abrams' big... I am his arch enemy, if you did not know that. <laughs> I have actually given recorded speeches about how much I hate J.J. Abrams. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I've, I've essentially given TED Talks about how much I despise J.J. Abrams. And I anything he touches, I'm really not a fan of. Now, I, I think Matt Reeves is, is a good, solid director. Not the greatest director, but a solid director. But as far as trying to shoehorn the Clover uh, the the Cloverfield monster into, okay, let's think about it. They tried to shoehorn it into what was that big Netflix movie that showed up after a Super Bowl, uh, the Cloverfield Paradox, right? Was that not right? A movie? I, I think I remember that because that's what I was about to get into saying. Say, didn't they try to like continue with Cloverfield, but it wasn't a success at all. No, because it wasn't really. It was a movie that they bought that they just slapped Cloverfield on at the end, and then you had the movie with isn't that Mary Elizabeth Winstead and John Goodman where it's like the Clover, like twelve Cloverfield Lane or some nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, that might not be the name of the movie, but they like shoehorned. That was another movie that was purchased. And then they just kind of threw the Cloverfield. They you can't do that. That is not fair to the Cloverfield monster. 
right? And then, um, if I remember correctly, there was a World War II zombie movie that was actually very good that they tried to make a Cloverfield movie, but they blew it. And I cannot recall the name of it. But it was it was a it was actually a pretty good movie. And, oh, what was the name of that? It's like o- Operation Overlord or something like that. I think that's what it was called. Operation Overlord is a solid World War II zombie movie. And amongst all of that, they tried they they originally uh, were going to shoehorn Cloverfield into that, but it did not work. So I just feel like this is one of those things where J.J. Abrams was like, oh, Matt Reeves, you have a great idea. And then, like, I'm going to try to just stuff this in as many things as possible. And it just didn't work out. And it's a shame because they essentially destroyed the Cloverfield franchise, to me, personally. So that ranks him much lower because I just feel like we were sold a bill of goods and we were never given that bill of goods. Like, oh, look at this giant monster that's going to be super cool. It's going to be the next super awesome kaiju. And then they just, like, trashed it. Which it makes it to me, it's either a C tier. I would give it, I would normally give it an F tier, but I would be, I could agree with a C tier because there is no D tier because it does do a lot of damage. Like it does, and it does blow up. uh, Who's that girl who's, um, she was in a bunch of films and I cannot remember her name. She was in the uh, the one where they did a spoof. It was Seth Rogen and James Franco did a spoof of... Uh, it's like called The Dictator or something like that. I'm really bad at remembering actresses' names, by the way. <laughs> if you did I was not about to say, I, I'm not recalling this one at all, actually. Uh, she was in... She's in Cloverfield. She's also in The Dictator. She's also in... She's pro- I think she was like the co-star of Masters of Sex. One of these days, I'll... I'll yeah, remember. definitely didn't see that one. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I just know it from knowing it. But what do you You're think right, about, right. like, it's his tier level? So, Cloverfield, when I first... Um, when I was much younger and heard about him, like, across across the internet, I, I thought he was kind of... Meh, I think he was overrated. And yeah. I, I honestly, I don't think he's as overrated now as he was back then. But I think the concept of Cloverfield is okay the design in my opinion kind of lackluster it kind of reminds me of like the exact same uh lackluster design concept of and this might be a bit controversial to say but of gabra uh for those who know it oh really? i don't like his design all that much in fact i think his design honestly is what inspired the mutus or the mutos in the end yeah um because be. they do kind of share that similar uh posture and things like that i think his height is way too high I yeah, think he is too way too tall. Um, For as his, they like, continue, spindly like, little legs to even hold him up. Right, because I think they even said that that Cloverfield was like a baby or something like that. Like, it wasn't even fully grown. It's like, how do you know that? Like, how do you know that thing, thing ain't, ain't any bigger than what it could be? And it's so please, I think it's like, blow tall. people's heads up. It was Lizzie Kaplan, the actress that I was looking for, by the way. Ah, I got you. Um, I think, I think... Cloverfield within that zombie context definitely sounded weird, but I, I know a way that they could have kind of played that off where it's like Cloverfield was the hive mind or something like that among amongst the like the zombie um thing. So I think Cloverfield has a lot more potential. I just don't think it's had really a good movie to showcase it. I would love to see a a genuine uh remake of Cloverfield, but not in the way of like the source film. Because I don't think monster movies like that are going to be any good unless it's like a YouTube video of analog horror. Because, I I mean, I've seen those work. I just don't think it works in a, in a monster movie. Yeah. Um. So so I'm willing I'm willing to. For, for just in coolness level, it's definitely down for me and destruction. I'd put it around a seven and eight. Yeah. Um, cause yeah, I do agree that it is a destructive being, but is it exactly really interesting for me? Not really. So I'd say, yeah, about it, about a, a C or I know you said you don't have a D so whatever's below C. 
it's either C or F. F is like a complete failure, which I don't think it's a complete nah, failure. I can't, I can't a say lot that. Of hype. Yeah, I'd say it's a C. So C tiers, like, you know, it's not bad. I mean, I, I can't let my prejudice against J.J. Abrams color it to be anything worse than a C. <laughs> so, all right. I our, got you. Our next monster is an interesting one because I also think that that one is kind of controversial. This is from the film Underwater... The Cthulhu monster from Underwater, have the one with Kristen Stewart, which that came out not too long ago. This is probably the most recent one on our 2020, so only four years ago. Okay, I probably haven't seen this one then because no, I don't know about it. Okay, so this one and uh, sp- spoiler for a four-year-old movie, Kristen Stewart. It's it's like um, I'm a giant fan of underwater monster movies and there aren't a lot of them but the ones that there are of like i I, leviathan could be one of my favorite practical monster movies if you've ever seen that or deep star six which is not as exciting as leviathan leviathan's very good uh so as far and, and even like deep rising which is kind of campy and cheesy like i enjoy that movie too so underwater monsters have always intrigued me and then on top of all that I am, you know, I would count myself amongst one of the biggest fans of H.P. Lovecraft in not in the world. I mean, I've read every single thing that H.P. Lovecraft has basically ever written, at least all of his short stories and novels and things like that. So I'm a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft and his mythology. And essentially what you have here in this movie is there's a, um, like, a deep sea mining expedition type thing. And I guess they dug too deep, and they they awoken the unawakenable, the Cthulhu monster. I really had high hopes for this movie, and but I did not see it in the theaters. And I was like, it kind of looked too much like Alien. Like, oh, it's Alien Underwater. So I was like, eh. And Kristen Stewart doesn't excite me because she's a mouth breather. I would assume that she would just drown underwater because she breathes from her mouth so much. You probably never heard. Have you never heard that, that Kristen Stewart only acts with her mouth open all the time? So, no, I've never heard okay. that before. Yeah, people call her a mouth breather, so that's okay. So anyway, uh, at the end of the movie, there's like a bunch of like sea monsters that kind of attack. They're they're like trying to do like get out of their underwater mining colony deal thing, and then they find out that all these sea monsters essentially report to Cthulhu. And then at the end, again, spoilers, she like blows up Cthulhu, which is kind of stupid. So I would say that, I mean, the idea of Cthulhu is a an absolute S character, but the execution on this, while I thought the movie was not as bad as I thought, the fact that I was like, oh, you're doing Cthulhu and then Cthulhu can be blown up. That wasn't that interesting to me. So to me, it was like an mm-hmm. F tier. And specifically, I was going to say, as you're describing it, it's just like the idea that you can screw up Cthulhu is bewildering. Um, because, yeah, you're correct. Uh, Cthulhu is one of the most famous, if not the most famous, H.P. Lovecraft character uh, of all time. I mean, you can easily go up to anyone and say, hey, you know who Cthulhu is? And they'd be like, yeah, I know what Cthulhu is. Yeah. And many games have, have made attempts to like make Cthulhu in the game. Like the first time I heard of Cthulhu was actually through my playthrough of Terraria, which you have to fight a, a boss at the beginning called the Eye of Cthulhu. And then my brother, who is huge into mythology, showed me what Cthulhu actually looked like. And I went, are you serious? What? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> like, I mean, it was, it, it's monstrous. It's big. And it's like, I should have known it was big. I mean, after fighting in Terraria, but I didn't know. Um, but no, if, if you're telling me that in, in a movie where they had Cthulhu as the main, uh, the main uh, antagonist and they blew him up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that to me at least sounds like an F tier. Yeah, I just feel like it was a, uh, a a wasted opportunity. It's fine to have like a giant monster, but it, but the the problem I have with it is that in the best depictions of Cthulhu, and even Love, Death, and Robots had like a really good kind of Cthulhu mythology. It's not so much that Cthulhu is this giant monster that's gonna like stomp and wreak havoc on things. He was even in South Park. I mean, that's how iconic Cthulhu was. <laughs> 
is that you have this uh, this monster that is almost like unknowable and like it damages you psychically like your your mind can barely handle you can't comprehend how horrific this creature is and i think while they did kind of a good job with the the barely able to comprehend how horrific it is the fact that they even made it part of the mortal plane makes it kind of weak so and and as I've never heard anybody say that Underwater is like an amazing movie or anything like that. It's su- it's basically like Alien 3 plus Big Monster at end. So I have to put it in the F tier. And Kristen Stewart, s- 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 such a strange actress. While I think she can be a good actress and she's fine in that movie, I just, I, I just, I just cannot stand behind this depiction of Cthulhu. How's that sound? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to agree. Uh, just just going off of what you're saying in this one, because I haven't personally seen the movie myself. But if everything you're saying to me is a basic description of what uh, this monster is to be, I really don't foresee him being anything threat level, at least uh, compared to the other monsters that we've already compared it with. Yeah, I mean, it claims it could destroy like the whole like world or whatever, but I don't believe it because. It got blown up by like Kristen Stewart. So anything that she did, I I cannot. I don't think she. It's not replicable. Or anything that that the the small lady can do. Yes. I'm pretty sure every other monster on this list could have done. <laughs> yes, I feel I feel that way. And that leads us to our final monster for tonight, at least. And this one, it's kind it's kind of like it's weird because I this is probably one of my favorite kaiju movies of all time. Pacific Rim, and I couldn't, ah, okay. I couldn't pick a specific kaiju because none of them are distinct enough for me to be like, look, I know they all have their own names, and they're all like, they have their own abilities, and I think it's interesting. Like, I've, I've watched people do analysis on YouTube where they're like, right. oh, well, you know, they knew the other, they the, the kaiju, you know, because they're all clones or whatever, they all knew the weaknesses of like, you know, the Chinese robot and the Russian robot and the Australian right. robot, but they never knew that, you know, um, uh, Gypsy Danger or whatever the hell it's called was out of commission and nobody really knew like it was an analog robot. Nobody knew it was going to come back and work and it didn't have the EMP didn't work against it. But the monsters are so kind of generic they could all just be one generic kaiju, so I kind of lump them all together because there wasn't think, one that I was like, "Oh yeah. my gosh, this is so iconic!" Right? Yeah, because like the the category ten, uh, I guess yeah, the category ten kaiju. I think the only difference was was its its size. I mean, that's the only difference I saw progressing is that some of them have more unique abilities. In terms of like one one uh, kaiju was able to fly, yeah. The other kaiju was just a gorilla, yeah. And then another kaiju was more so of a sea serpent. I mean that that was kind of the m- distinct differences that they just chose a different animal per kaiju, yeah. Um, but I wouldn't. I, I'd have to agree with you. I wouldn't say any of them were really a standout. Like, um, like how the monster verse is kind of portraying their their titans is like each of them have a unique ability and, a, and an element that sets them apart from others. But I think in Pacific Realm, they were kind of on a loss with that because of the whole it was constructed from an alien world. And exactly how you said, they're all clones of each, each other in a sense. I just didn't they didn't have the the iconic. They just weren't as iconic as other creatures. It kind of falls into that whole that that whole clover field of like kind of a generic monster design i mean when you look at you look at the toho designs and all of them are so unique and instant like you could see a sil- silhouette of of you know Ghidorah or gigan or yeah, almost m- the majority of them and you instantly recognize what they are and right, here they, they all had, each have like this trademark thing to them that you can associate them with. And here you had them, and I I feel like they were more a story element than they were unique creatures that I'd be like, 
Yeah, I specifically remember the 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 one that's like kind of like a gorilla or like you said they're they're all they're just kind of generic. And I even watched the uh the show, the the anime on it and it was kind yeah. of the same thing. Like I enjoyed it, don't get me wrong. Pacific Rim flat out one of my favorite kaiju movies ever made. Uh the Mako uh, the uh what's her name? Mako Mori is that her name? The the lead female character, Mako. She like she redefined the Bechdel test because she has her oh, own. Oh yeah, yeah. Names. Um yeah, no. I think you're on the right track. It definitely started with an M and I think it's Mako Mori. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's Mako. I, yeah, I think it is. And she had her own plot line that didn't involve like she wasn't revolved around a man. Like she was a strong, independent woman, and she did but she did like she had a really great story. I really liked right. her story. It was it was it was it was engaging. I love the part with Idris Elba and he shows up and the father's daughter relationship and her trying to prove herself and he's like, "No, I want to keep you out of harm." I love it. I love all of it. I again, it's probably one of the greatest kaiju stories ever written because the human characters are actually characters and i actually care <laughs> about them on some level idris elba right. is so good in that i just can't even get over it i i love him is his like was it something pentecost like it, it just love it i love all of it there's there's nothing i don't like about that movie i hate the sequel but the monsters are so, they are clearly Godzilla level threats. They could clearly level a city if they want to. I just wish they were more iconic. I just cannot put them on S tier. I just can't. Yeah. I would have to uh, agree with the whole, like, they're definitely a Godzilla level threat because, I mean, clearly something is as threatening as that to where you have to build giant mech suits. I mean, what other what other franchise besides Kong and Godzilla did, did people have to build entire mech suits to fight Kaiju, yeah, you can except for Ultraman. Um, but it's just it's the idea in general that that fuels the creative passion for the design of the Kaiju to where they put more focus onto the robots more so than the actual monsters themselves. And I feel like if they gave a little bit more personality to each of the monsters, I feel like you're right that they could be distinguished in their own right. Um, in terms of coolness level. I'd, I'd give it like a six because they're 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 cool, but it's mean like I'm not gonna remember them in a couple of years unless somebody like happens to bring it up. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, but do you remember this specific one? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but um overall, yeah, I'd say I'd say it's a solid A tier. Yeah, I think um, I'm agreeing. Overall. I'm agreeing with you, A tier, because I remember one of them is called Knife Head. But I think that's the yeah, one. that's that's the the one that I can only remember because it had a genuine name. Yeah. Um, plus, it was also referencing Godzilla X Kong. I think it's the most favored one. Yeah, I think that's. I think we did a pretty solid job of of rating our monsters here. So I'm gonna run through it real quick, just give okay. everybody a summary. We have the host at B tier. Not any disrespect, but he's just not big enough to do that much damage. We have the giant octopus, which clearly wrecks a bridge and could wreck other stuff, but chose not to because he's classy. We have the, yeah, that's an yes, A tier. Yes. We have the yes, Stay Puff yes. Marshmallow Man, who is clearly an S tier. I don't know why I thought anything other than that, because it's horrifying and damage worthy. Very difficult to defeat. We have the, uh, uh, something at C tier. What the heck was that one? Cloverfield? Yeah, Clovey is down at C tier because Clovey is just a general disappointment. Now, I'm going to say the Cthulhu-like monster from Underwater because Cthulhu is his S tier. But the Cthulhu-like <laughs> monster from Underwater is an F tier because... You know, they... It failed. Yeah, Drinker does this little joke thing when it's like it's supposed to be a stand-in for a character, but it, but it fails to do it. He goes... Uh, insert name impersonator. So that's what we're <laughs> going to call that one. Insane. The Cthulhu impersonator. <laughs> the Cthulhu impersonator right there. It ain't, it ain't still going to do nothing for us. And then we have our, our, our generic kaiju from Pacific Rim, regardless of how much we might like that movie. 
the the monsters were not specific enough to be exciting on any level. I just yeah, they just it compared to even like Monster X showing up in Final Wars, like that thing shows right. up for like all of less than five minutes, and I'm still like, wow, that's pretty iconic, and not just I'm not getting it from Pacific Rim, even though I think Pacific Rim as a movie is S tier. So that's our list. What do you guys think? Do you guys think we screwed this one up? We may have, because we could be off kilter. You could also do us a big favor and suggest what else you'd like us to talk about. We're thinking about doing maybe like uh, Godzilla Enemies or Godzilla Friends, or maybe we could do horror movie characters. Whatever you think you'd like us to rank, we would love to do it for you. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to both channels. Here at Our Reviews Will Kill You and Gigablasto 2. You know him, you love him. He does a great job. He's a pro. But like and subscribe. Mm-hmm. Share. Tell your friends. Because we're here for you, the fans. So anyway, that's all for us here. Uh, but I guess from both of us, we're on to the next one.